Good morning. So I had a storage issue um, when I was doing my update on the garden earlier. So instead of refilming that, I'm just going to do part two. This is March 17th, 2020. And this is my zone nine Northeast Florida raised bed garden. And my garden is uh, primarily uh, pretty much just um, an eclectic mix of repurposed um, recycled and salvaged items that's how I build my beds I, I did all of this uh, all these beds and everything myself and I like to reuse things and keep things as simple as possible um, gardens don't have to be fancy to grow food and I really just like the eclectism of um, you know, go, just doing things as I go and using what I have on hand and not having to be uh, super serious or strenuous um, or, you know, at the expense of doing things a certain way. So, that being said, here is one of my current projects that I'm working on. I've been working on moving these tires. I got the whole back row out of here because there wasn't anything planted in them yet um, and I moved them to a different area to plant my tomatoes because I planted tomatoes here last year and then as soon as these peas are done I'll be moving those out and I'll be building a new bed um, I'll keep my little bed here on the corner with the that I've got made out of bricks and wood um, I'll just add a few uh, either a, a board here or um, some more landscaping things and then I'll be putting um, probably a piece of metal back here to hold it in and then just shaping it out into a new bed and you can see right here where I have been um, picking up pieces of salvaged wood um, my neighbor went to a nursing home and they've been cleaning out her sheds and her husband had a lot of wood and things like that um, that were in there and I just picked them up to help me um, make my little beds this year and going down the middle, I got a beefsteak tomato that I grew, Lola banana peppers, um, and this thing is kind of interesting. It is a window box that I got from um, Family Dollar for a couple bucks, and um, Dollar Tree has these tomato and flower rockets. Um, they used to sell them on TV, but they're basically just a roll. It's like a thin toilet paper consistency layer with some fake grass on top of that um, with fertilizer and seeds in the middle. And you just roll it into your window boxes or your um, planting area and cover it with dirt and water it. And it has all, like thousands of different, all different kinds of seeds um, for flowers to grow in there. So um, I'm trying to grow as many flowers as I can in my garden for the bees and so i picked that up to see how it would do and then there is um some snapdragons that i grew from seed and then i got some more pots that i picked up from dollar tree that i'm going to be planting more flower starts in um, i just started a bunch more seeds in my greenhouse and I'm still growing my cabbage savoy cabbage brussels sprouts and um, broccoli and onions here and then I have a tomato start, which is a, a zoicha, orange beef steak. And um, I haven't grown this one. This is the first time I'm growing it um, this year. So I'm excited to see how that uh, turns out for me. And then here I have um, some new jalapeno starts. I bought these started um, at my plant nursery at the feed store this weekend. And they are Jalafuegos. And they are a large jalapeno that's supposed to be hotter than the normal uh, regular um, jalapenos. So they're supposed to be good for stuffing or pickling. And I love peppers. I love spicy food. And we make and eat a lot of those. So I'm excited to try those out. And here I got some more of my cauliflower, which has been so hot that a lot of my cauliflower that had started making heads which are trying to flower but um so what we got right now these are pretty new heads that i put in here you can see they're trying to start forming um, if it doesn't cool down a little bit they'll probably go to flower and i won't get much but they're there now 
and in this pot I got a couple of regular jalapeno starts that I started and a I started those in the fall and then I have a purple jalapeno that I started recently and then I got another um, pot of flowers that I started these are pink alyssum uh, sweet Williams and snapdragons and then here's my Phoenix tomato one of the couple that I still have uh, from fall that did not get killed by the frost and it's been putting out tomatoes for me for um, several months now and just picked off some today and I, you can see it's loaded with flowers right now so uh, a few days ago like within the last week I um, picked up some kelp meal um, I've been reading about um, fertilizers that can help with transplants and, and smaller seedlings and flowering plants and uh, that have a lot of trace minerals and uh, just kind of give the plants a boost so I started adding that to my water um, fertilization like a weekly water fertilization um, for my bigger plants that are flowering um, such as my tomatoes and also to my transplants and since I did that everything is wanting to flower and being a lot more happy so um, I also put fish emulsion that's what I normally use but um, I think the kelp mill is really helping with um, with the flowering and fruiting so here is this little concrete bed that I made here I got another little um, container from the Dollar Tree that I drilled some holes in and planted part of that flower rocket in there um, to get some more flowers and then these are my uh, ground cherries um, these are the golden orange color um, ground cherries and I planted out 12 of these but there were some of them are really small transplants um, every the seeds are really tiny and every one of them germinated so some of the ones that I planted were smaller um, and a few of them like four of them um, didn't make it through the transplant um, but I have more that I'm hardening off right now to plant in here um, and then that, I started some more seeds too um, but I've also just ordered some purple tomatillos and some salsa verde tomatillos so that's going to give me a good um, variety of um, sweet tomatillo, ground cherry type um, things to add to my salsa. So we grew about a dozen of the salsa verde tomatillos last year and they were so delicious. I want to grow many more this year. And here is my purple um, onions. They are growing so fast. We've been using some of the tops of them. And also along the back there I have a row of bunching onions um, the green onions that you buy from the um, grocery store my husband bought some and he cut all the tops off and just used the green part and I planted them in the garden and we just the other day I came out and cut them off again and used them again so they're cut and come again green bunching onions that we got um, growing in the back of there so he just thought that was cool that we he bought some onions and we've already ate them several times. And look at my potatoes. My potatoes are so happy. Last week I side dressed them um, with fertilizer um, and they have grown so much since then. And these are early tomatoes, um, our potatoes. They are the Yukon Golds. Uh, red New Orleans, red Pontiacs, and white Kennebecs. And then I also have some in these grow bags. And one thing that I did today was I finally planted the rest of those potatoes that I've had in my greenhouse. And I planted them in these feed sacks that I have here. <coughs> and I put... Um, leaves in the bottom and then sand and dirt from my um, chicken yard and horse manure compost and fertilizer so yeah we'll see what happens I tried to plant them like this in these feed sacks um, a few years ago maybe like three years ago but that spring was so wet that everything uh, pretty much most of it rotted 
So I'm just going to try again because I don't have anything to lose. This is mostly just material from my yard and recycled bags. So if they make, they make. If they don't, um, I mean, it's better than just letting them rot. So interested to see how that goes. And there's another take on your, you don't have to be fancy to grow things if you're waiting to, uh, you know, to, to be able to have that fancy infrastructure to be able to, to grow things and that's holding you back. You definitely, um, you know, you can use that time to do experimental things like this to be learning while you're waiting for the ability or the space or the materials or the skill set to make fancy things to grow your vegetables in so under here my squash have loved this row cover that I've put on here um, this is my spaghetti squash and it has grown like crazy it's starting to get little buds on it probably gonna have to uncover it because putting it under here just uh, made it just completely take off and it was cooler when I did that and it made it warmer under there which it liked a lot and then under here under this one is my acorn squash you can see under there it is so happy and have grown so much in the last week too and then at the end here I have my dwarf um, Peter Pan green patty pan squash under here and it is happy I just planted these two starts out um, this weekend so two more germinated after the after I planted out the original ones so when that happens I don't all if I only give you know all of them don't germinate I just leave leave it and put them put the rest back in the greenhouse and let them keep doing their thing till they're ready and then there um there's some more acorn squash over there and you can see they're not nearly as big or happy as the ones underneath this road cover um there's nothing in there and then here is my tomato plants let me move this so you can see you can step back So here's my 16 by 2 feet um, east facing tomato bed that I put in this year. So this is new and these are um, tomatoes that I germinated um, in January. Um, right around the first week of January I germinated these and since I put them in the ground um, they are so happy and they are growing so much. Um, we're going to run down the varieties I have some firebird feather black beauty which is a black um, beefsteak Paul Robeson Kellogg's breakfast Dr. Witchy which is my all-time favorite right now um, grew it last year it's a huge yellow beefsteak um, so 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 good and sweet blueberry clackamas and my sprinkler is right there so it's kind of been beating that one up a little bit um, see how that goes I might have to end up moving it up a little bit farther away from the sprinkler but I have the store aromas um, which are seeds that I got from organic Roma tomatoes uh, from the grocery store a couple years ago um, and I saved the seeds out of one of them and I planted them last year and I'm planting them again this year from that same tomato because they grew the most beautiful healthy hardy plants with tons of gorgeous Roma tomato fruit just like the one that I bought from the store so um, those are good Roma tomatoes Kellogg's breakfast um, I grew these last year but I grew them too late so I didn't get anything it was too hot um, here after about um, you know when it gets into July you can pretty much wrap up tomatoes until you know October September October because it's just too hot here and wet um, so I, I did start some in June but it was pretty much a bust so I'm glad to get some in the ground earlier this year so I can try them out they are a orangish yellow beefsteak and a lot of people rave about them so 
I want to try them out this year and hopefully I can see what the hype's all about. And just some normal beef steaks. Um, these are some Charentas cantaloupes that I planted in my recycled broken um, wheelbarrow. And then I'm going to either plant some flowers or some morning glories or, um, or some pole beans in that planter back there. And um, here's the 8 foot by 2 foot um, tomato bed that I planted. And it has Black Beauty, Fire Feather, Paul Robeson, uh, Blueberry Clackamas, which I grew last year. It's a large blue um, cherry tomato. It's very prolific, very good tomatoes. Um, Black Beauty. And then here is my flower garden that I have been telling you that I'm going to put in here. Finally got that put in. And also my little, um, my little bottle, uh, recycled bottles, um, craft beers and ginger ales and stuff like that, wine bottles, to make my little border here. Then I have Pooh Bear, he's waiting for the sunflowers to start blooming so all the butterflies and bees will come visit him. Um, but they're solar eclipse and mammoth Russian sunflowers. And then on the front, I um, grew those from seeds. And then I have some sweet alyssum, pink and white, with some snapdragons in there as well. So that is one of the projects that I've been trying to get done that I got done this, this past uh, weekend. And then over here, you can see all of the beautiful purple and gold flowers from the Cherokee wax bush beans and the royalty purple beans. I'm really excited to see beans or flowers because that means I'm going to be getting beans soon. And here are my beets and then the beets are coming along in here. And then we have the uh, Romanesco broccoli, which I'm hoping the weather will hold out for. Um, to get some of those because that's the first time I've grown those and they're like a lime green fractal broccoli that I didn't even know about until last January um, but they are so delicious I had some pickled and at a brunch and had to grow them so I hope I can get some this year um, I'll definitely be growing those from now on and then these are my uh, little marvel shelling peas I got some lady slipper radishes. I'm going to plant some more carrots here. I decided that I'm going to try to do one more thing of carrots um, in this bed here. And then I planted some corn to germinate in this um, silver queen in this little container here. And then two more of the little flower rocket flower pots. And then in, in this bed I have some cauliflower that I started from seed and some broccoli. And then some scarlet nantes carrots. And um, it's pretty much uh, the update that I wanted to show you on this side of the garden. Um, I still have that whole section um, of bean bed to plant beans. I just germinated some speckled butter peas, the Mississippi peas, more dragon tongue bush beans, um, burpee stringless. Um, and some blue lake pole beans that will be going in here next and down there you see the dragon tongues and um, Kentucky wonders and then um, also have two tomatoes plants in here I got a San Marzano there and a Azoicha right there so um, real quick in case you didn't see the lot part one of this video I'll show you um, the new tire area where I've planted out all of my um, tomatoes, not all of them, but a bunch of them. Um, the second area of tomatoes, I should say. And I've got some Black Beauties, Kellogg's Breakfast, more of the Store Romas, um, Blueberry Clackamas, Abe Lincoln, Azoicha, Napa Chardonnay. Blueberry, Beefsteak, Dr. Witchy, uh, Firefeather, 
more Abe Lincoln and beefsteaks, uh, pink ox hearts, Kellogg's breakfast. Yeah, so that is tomato area number two that I've got going on right now. And I love to grow tomatoes in all different varieties. And I love to um, eat them fresh. I love tomato sandwiches and BLTs. My kids love BLTs too. And so we, I also can them, make sauce and dice tomatoes and all of that. So we only have uh, lots of salsa. We only have about two jars of salsa left and about two jars of green beans left. So come on green beans and tomatoes. All right, well, I'm going to wrap up the tour today. I'm going to stand back here so you can see, get a different perspective on the garden. So I'm standing back in the back corner where the tomatoes are. That is it for today and I may do a greenhouse and transplant update later. See you later.